already knew I had to say. The only thing how God worked for me, He showed me things before it happened. I see things before it happened. And I came and I didn't prepare to stand on speech. God gave His son. Thank you, Sister Johnson, and what a wonderful job of my new family. 
done. Uh, God bless you and thank you for, amen. Everybody knew their speeches, not hard, amen. Amen. What a blessing, amen. We thank the Lord who doeth all things well. And this is um, the most exciting time of the Christians uh, when Resurrection Sunday comes around. Amen. If we've never shouted all year, the Resurrection Sunday comes. We ought to shout on purpose. Hallelujah. Thank God that He lives on the inside. Amen. Father, we bless you and we honor you so much. You are a great God. You are the greatest thing that has ever happened to us. We thank you that you have brought up our liberty when you died on the cross. Thank you for not just dying, but you even allowed your body to be buried, but you didn't stay dead. Early on Sunday morning, you got up from the dead. And we thank you. Master, we pray this morning that we would think with my mind, speak with my mouth, stand at my body. Let something be said, let something be done to encourage your believers to leave this place testifying. You did see Jesus. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen. 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 I want to direct your attention this morning to the Gospel according to St. Mark. St. Mark. Amen. And this is Communion Sunday. We thank God. Uh, uh, Communion Sunday on the first Sunday of the year and Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Also, I want to say uh, the church anniversary plans are underway. Uh, the old ship of Zion is going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Yes. I had the opportunity to be at two rehearsals and I got happy in the office. Amen. I got happy in the office. So spread the word uh, on April 13th. Uh, it is going down. Amen. The old ship of Zion here at 7 o'clock p.m. Amen. 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 And let us keep once again Mother Rose Williams in prayer, Methodist South Lake, and Deacon Michael Worlds in prayer, uh, Methodist North Lake. Amen. 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 Uh, Mark chapter 16, verse number 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, uh, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. And he said unto them, Be not frightened. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed, neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. I want to preach this morning from a simple subject, and that is a day makes a difference. A day makes a difference. You may be seated in the presence of our God. A day makes the difference. Many of us that are here this morning can testify that things can change overnight. I have always been amazed as to how fast things change. Things are one way one day, and the next day they are totally different. One day you think you're well, and the next day you determine you're extremely ill. One day everything in your life is going well, and the next day everything is falling apart. 
And many of you should have said amen right there. Amen. One day it appears that there is no hope for your situation. And then the next day the answer to your problem shows up. Uh, it is true that many changes can occur over the course of one day. Uh, many of us, we go to work in the morning and we can testify that as soon as the clock strikes, it hasn't even been uh, two or three hours, we find ourselves having no job. Uh, things can not only change over the course of the day, but things can change even in the same day. And not only can things change, but people will change. Uh, people will be one day, today and tomorrow, they'll be a totally different person. One day they'll hug, they'll embrace you, they'll kiss you, and the next day they'll walk by you as if they never knew you. Not only will things change, but people can change over the course of one day. A day makes a difference. A day makes a difference, and that was never more true when Jesus rose from the dead, when the body of Jesus was placed in the tomb by Joseph and by Nicodemus the day he was crucified, that was a dark and a terrible day. The sun went down, the Bible says that the sun refused to shine. All hopes, all dreams, uh, they were dead. The disciples, they were hiding for they trembled and they were afraid. And Mark is the only gospel writer that speaks of the dark and dreary Sabbath that passed between the day Jesus died and the day Jesus rose from the dead. And I'm sure this morning there are some people here that can testify that you went to bed at night and your day was one way, but you rose in the morning and your day ended up a different way. That there were some of us who are here this morning, we went to bed well and woke up sick, went to bed and had money in the bank and woke up broke, went to bed and the family was doing well, but when we woke up, all hope was lost. Things can change over the course of one day. You ever ask yourself, how in the world did I end up here? How in the world did it happen this way? It, it was not a gradual change. It, it didn't, I didn't see this coming. It was just one way yesterday. But today things are all together different. But, but, but as we look at our text today, Mark moves us from the tragic Saturday to a glorious Sunday. Uh, we call Friday Good Friday. Because that's the day Jesus died on the cross. But Saturday is actually silent Saturday. Because uh, everything stood still. When Jesus died on the cross, everything there was stood still. Not just because it was a Saturday, it was Sabbath day. And on Sabbath, nobody worked, nobody moved. Everybody just stayed still and worshiped the Lord. But there, is, there was a, a, a distinct difference between Friday, between Saturday, and then on Sunday. The first thing we see in the text this morning as we look at the 16th chapter of Mark, as we look at verse number one, verse number three, we see a ministry of love. We see three women uh, that were mentioned in these verses. They observed a long, dark Saturday, a Sabbath day rather. They stayed in their homes and the Bible says uh, they rose up to uh, get spices and herbs uh, to, to go and to anoint the body of Jesus. Uh, the Bible lets us know when these women got to Jesus' grave that Jesus' body was already wrapped in linen stripes, that, that his body was already embalmed by, by Joseph and by Nicodemus. These women came to bid their farewells. They came uh, to say goodbye to Jesus. They came to anoint his body, but when they showed up, everything was different. Uh, have anybody got that kind of testimony uh, that you thought things were going to go down one way, uh, but when you left your boss's office, your boss told you something totally different uh, than you expected. You thought your boss was going to tell you, go home, pack your office up, uh, thank your job well done, but when you leave the office, he's telling you you're doing a fine job and there's a raise coming your way. I wish I had somebody here this morning that can testify that I woke up thinking 
things were going to be down. I woke up thinking uh, things were going to be dreary, but I thank God that he stepped in right in the nick of time. They came looking for a dead Jesus. They were devoted to him. They were sad. They missed him. They loved him. Their heart was overwhelmed. And as they were walking, they were doubting. How in the world are we going to roll this stone away? They were doubting in their mind. This stone is impossible for us to roll away. And, and, it's, and the theologians say that this stone, it weighed almost a thousand pounds. These women would have never been able to roll the stone away. But they had faith that when we get to the tomb somehow, some way, we're going to be able to anoint Jesus' body. And how many of you know that Jesus will show up on the scene before you get to the scene? And before these women got to the grave, the stone, you know the story, the Bible said the stone was already rolled away. And I came to let somebody know this morning who has a heart trial, who has a problem, who has something you're going through, let me encourage you this morning, before you get to your tomorrow, your answer is already there. They question themselves, how will we roll the stone away? Somebody this morning is asking yourself, how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to raise these children by myself? How am I going to put food on the table. How am I going to put my feet on the floor in the morning to face another day? Let me encourage you this morning, saints of God. God can see way down the line. He has what you need before you get to your situation. Before you ever get to a problem, God already has the answer for you. I come to let somebody know this morning, whatever you're going through, that God is your answer. So they doubted as they walked. They made their way to the tomb. They were filled with sorrow. They were filled with grief. They were filled with fear. They were not going looking for a living Lord. They were going looking for a cold corpse. Uh, but their problem was they were still living in Saturday. And that's some of you all's problem this morning. You're still living in Saturday. You're still living in a day uh, that was full of sorrow and grief. Uh, and you have forgotten that Saturday is gone. Uh, and you're now in Sunday. Uh, they were living in Sunday with Saturday on their mind. Uh, and many of us are living in today, but we got yesterday on our mind. Uh, and you'll never live, you'll never be all that God has called you to be uh, as long as you got your past on your mind. Uh, you got to learn at your neighbor and say, it is Sunday. Stop living in Saturday. Look at somebody else. Somebody, they didn't hear you tell them, it is Sunday. Today is Sunday. Stop living in what happened on yesterday. Let yesterday take care of yesterday. Let your skull be rolled away. God has come to me all. It did happen. You did have surgery. It did happen. You did lose your loved one. It did happen. Your body did get sick. It did happen. You did lose your best friend. It did happen. You lost your job. It did happen. You lost your money. It did happen. You had to bury some children. It did happen. You had to say that back to your mama. You had to say that back to your daddy. It did happen. But thank God Sunday is coming. And when Sunday is coming, I can say bye bye to my yesterday. Take the obituary off the wall. You got to leave. You got
got to face tomorrow. You got to keep on living because there's somebody depending on you to live. Jesus could not stay there because there were too many of us folk that were depending on him to live again. Jesus could not stay there. They didn't want me the first time. I'll stay there. But he knew there were some folk depending on him. These women had devotion. These women had doubt. But their doubt quickly escaped them when they walked into the tomb and saw that Jesus was not there. Is there anybody here that has ever watched all your dreams crumble? Your life that you planned. The children you thought you would have. The marriage you thought you would have. The future you thought you would have. You had to sit and watch your whole life crumble before you. All your dreams. All your hopes. Your future. And these women, their future was depending upon Jesus. They had to sit and watch their dreams crumble. But when they got to the tomb, they were able to see that Jesus was a man of his word. They did not necessarily know if Jesus' body had been captured because they understood that there were some guards that were keeping watch over Jesus' body because Pilate thought that Jesus' disciples would come and would try to take his body in the night. But they did not know that uh, as they arrived that morning that there had been a great earthquake. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that when storms come in your life, don't go hiding too fast. Because sometimes a blessing can come with your storm. Had it not been for the earthquake, the storm would have never been thrown away. But an angel came down and an earthquake happened. And because the earthquake happened, the storm was rolled away. And yet you got to learn to thank God that some bad stuff happened in your life. Because if some bad stuff never would have happened, you never would have trusted God. You never would have prayed like you pray now. You never would believe like you believe now. Sometimes you just got to thank God that some bad stuff did happen. Anybody thankful that you had some bad stuff? Anybody can testify that you learned from your mistakes? Uh, that you thank God for your earthquakes? That you thank God for every storm in your life? When they go into the tomb, they find a young man sitting on the right side. The young man is clothed in a strange garment. And we know the other Gospels tell us that this man is not an ordinary man. This young man is an angel. And this angel begins to speak to these women and he has a message for them. He has an Easter speech on Resurrection Sunday morning to deliver to these women. Uh, the first thing that he tells them is to not be afraid. He says, be not frightened. Uh, when they saw the angel, they were full of fear. And the word of frightened means don't be terrified. Uh, these women were absolutely terrified. Uh, he confirmed for them uh, what they already knew. He confirmed for them uh, in the latter part of verse number 6 that Jesus was crucified. Uh, that he did die. Yeah, that you are not dreaming. You, your eyes are not deceiving you. He is not here. They really did nail him to the cross. They really did bury him in a borrowed tomb. No, but he is not here. It is finished. He has risen as he said he would. And I think I say this every Sunday to you, Morning Star. He will do what he said he will do. Everything that he has promised you, it shall surely come to pass. He did prophesy that if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. So this message was proof. After telling the women that Jesus had risen from the dead, the angel invited them to look at the place where they laid them. 
as they looked, they were told uh, what they saw as we look at, we can look at the gospel according to St. John chapter 20, that they would have seen the clothes, stripes that had been wrapped around Jesus' body still laying there. His clothes were laying undisturbed as if his body had just risen from where he was laying and he left his clothes right there. They would see a napkin folded and laid to the side. They would have looked upon a scene of absolutely calm and order. When they walked in, I'm sure they had seen the storm roll away. They thought that they would see chaos. They thought they would see disorder, but instead of seeing chaos and disorder, they see peace, they see calm, and they see order. How many of you know whenever Jesus is on the scene uh, that we don't have disorder, we have order. Uh, and the way we can tell if Jesus is in the midst uh, is when there is peace and when there is order. Uh, because when Jesus is in the midst, uh, there is always peace and order. Whenever you see confusion and disorder, you know Jesus, he must not be in it. Whenever some mess begins to follow something, you can always believe Jesus is not in it. Because when Jesus is in something, it's always peaceful, it's always orderly. When Jesus is in something, you, you can tell because Jesus makes the difference. But the angel sends them away from the tomb to carry a message to the disciples. He used women to go talk to some scared men. It's the truth. John 20 and 19 tells us the disciples were hiding because they were afraid. So he sent three women with a message to tell the disciples to meet Jesus. Not only to tell my disciples, but to go get my disciples and Peter. And the Bible says that these women, they were obedient, that they went and did exactly what Jesus said. I want you to know this morning there's power in an empty tomb. And it has the power to roll stones away in your life today. It has the power to deliver us from a dying Saturday. It has the power to allow us to live in a Sunday that is full of victory. When somebody tells you, let's wait until tomorrow, don't discount what they're saying. Because sometimes some things you've got to sleep on. Some things you can't answer and respond right away. You've got to allow some time to come in between your situation and your answer. Because sometimes if things happen too fast, you might not respond the way that God would want you to respond. And some of us, we've got to learn how to shut our mouth, go home, go to bed, and come back and try it again. Because oftentimes when we respond too quickly, we'll often respond in the wrong way. We'll often do the wrong thing. We'll often make the wrong um, decision. But I want somebody to know today, I want somebody to be encouraged to know that finishing is always better than starting. When you start working out and you start going to the gym, it seems as if you're unable to lift 
the way. But if you just keep on coming and keep on lifting and keep on striving before you know it, the hard weight, the weight you thought was impossible for you to lift will soon become easy for you. I come to encourage somebody, don't give up in the middle of the battle, but keep on going until the end. Is there anybody here this morning, you know for yourself that finishing is always better than starting. A Friday's payday is always better than waking up on a Monday morning and punching a clock. I come this Sunday morning to let somebody know you'll be glad that you hung in there because Sunday is coming. You'll be glad that you kept the faith because Sunday is coming. You'll be glad you endured your Friday. You'll be glad you went to your Saturday because Sunday is coming. And when Sunday comes, is there anybody here that's looking for your Sunday? Is there anybody here? Y'all ain't looking. Y'all ain't getting excited. Is there anybody here? You can testify that I couldn't see my way. I didn't know where my help was coming from. I didn't know how it was coming out. I thought I would die in this situation. But something it came. I came this morning to let somebody know that your Sunday can show up on a Monday. Your Sunday can show up on a Tuesday. Your Sunday can show up on a Wednesday. Your Sunday can show up on a Thursday. Whatever you got a problem, God will show up. In the midst of a story, uh, ain't you glad he died? Uh, on a hill, uh, far away, uh, stood an old rugged cross. He died uh, on a Friday, uh, but thank God uh, he didn't stay there. Uh, you know the story, uh, early, 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 Sunday morning, uh, he got up. He did that 
He was not asleep. He did die. And he did not die for sins of his own. But he died for my mess. He died. I, I'm going to put it on me because I know y'all are perfect. But he died because I'm jacked up. He died because I messed up. He died because he knew I could. He died just for me. But he rose the day on that third day Sunday morning. He was resurrected from the day. The door is open this morning. I want you to know a day can make a difference in your life. 